Transition metals can be found almost everywhere. In this simplified version of the periodic table, they are highlighted in orange. They are located between group 2 and 13. In fact, they are called transition metals because as you start from group 1 and move across from left to right, they make the transition between the alkali metals to the poor metals in group 13. Transition metals have a wide variety of uses. For instance, iron is the most abundant element on earth. It is also a very useful transition metal. Iron is combined with carbon and other transition metals to make steel. Uh, no. Steel. As we all know, steel has countless uses. Gold and silver are also transition metals. Traditionally, they were used to make coins. Nowadays, cheaper metals such as nickel and copper are used in coinage. Gold and silver are commonly used in jewelry for their luster and shine. Let us go back to the periodic table. As you know, the periodic table is divided into periods which go across and into groups which go down. It is also divided into blocks. You can think of a block as a combination of groups. Elements are grouped into blocks according to which of their orbitals are filled last. The blocks are named after these orbitals. There are four blocks called the S block, the P block, the D block, and the F block. In this course, we will not be focusing on the F block. The F block will be studied in a more advanced course. So at this level, we will be focusing on the S, P, and D blocks. Elements in groups 1 and 2 makes up the S block. If you don't believe me, you can work it out yourself. Just write out the electronic configuration of any element of groups 1 and 2 and you will see that their outermost orbital is an S orbital. Let us look at the electronic configurations of sodium and calcium. It can be seen that for both of these elements their S orbitals are filled last. Likewise, the elements in groups 13 to 18 makes up the P block. 
because their p orbitals are being filled last. For instance, let's look at the electronic configuration of boron. We can see that the last orbital to be filled with electrons is the 2p orbital. Likewise, the transition metals shown here makes up the D block. A little later on, we will look at their electronic configurations. But remember that they are in the D block because it is their D orbitals that are filled last with electrons. Now let's take a look at the D block by itself. Here, we see some selected metals of the D block. If we read the elements in one line, going from left to right, we are actually reading the elements of a row. So the elements from scandium to zinc makes up the first row. Similarly, the elements from yttrium to cadmium makes up the second row. And the elements shown in the third row starts from hafnium and ends at mercury. Now if we read the elements going from top to bottom in a column, we will actually be reading the elements within a group. For instance, scandium and yttrium both belong to group 3. Similarly, titanium, zirconium, and hafnium all belong to group 4. Likewise, nickel, palladium, and platinum all belong to group 10. Groups and rows can be used as coordinates for pinpointing the location of an element in the D-block. Now let us look and see how we write the electronic configurations of transition elements. Let us use scandium as an example. Scandium has an atomic number of 21. So if we apply the off-ball principle, we can start filling electrons in the 1s shell. Then we fill the 2s shell followed by the 2p, then the 3s, and then the 3p. Now so far we have 18 electrons, which means we have to place three more electrons into orbitals. Now remember, according to the off-ball principle, after we fill the 3p orbitals, we then fill the 4s, followed by the 3d. And so here we have written the electronic configuration of scandium. Now to avoid writing this in a lengthy way, the core electrons can be represented using the symbol of the nearest noble gas. The nearest noble gas to scandium in the periodic table is argon. Argon has an atomic number of 18, and so the symbol for argon can be used to represent the first 18 electrons of scandium. 
So here we have a shorter way of writing the electronic configuration of scandium. The noble gas symbol, which is written in square brackets, represents the core electrons. The electrons present in the 4s and 3d orbitals are the valence electrons. So in summary, for any transition element, the noble gas symbol can be used to represent the core electrons. Another point to note is that the electronic configuration is written in the order of principal quantum numbers. Let us look at our scandium example again. We had written it like this as shown on the screen because we fill the 4s before filling the 3d orbitals. Now the correct convention is that the orbital with a higher quantum number should go last. So the correct way to write it is shown here.